So the way the brain works yeah. is it consciously, unconsciously scans the environment for threat. And if something's threatened to it, alarm bells go off, it starts to like tune in to protect itself, right? There's unconscious threats to it. The number one unconscious threat is respiration, lack of oxygen. Mm -hmm. So if someone's not breathing correctly, right, if they're a mouth breather um, and they're not a nose breather, they're going to end up with some serious issues. If you put a mask over your face, it's going to dramatically affect you and it's going to level heighten the level of threat and fear automatically just because of it's reducing the the air then there's the psychological components to it right emotionally spiritually inspiration means to breathe in means to be inspired means to be in spirit and you're now affecting that whole process right it's like imagine would you put something over I, you know people would freak out about this if you told them Put a, a something over your muffler on your car. And they'd be like, no way. It's going to screw up my car. People, I've been doing fitness for 15 years. People treat their cars better than they do their bodies all the time. And because somebody said, because like a medical professional said, maybe you should wear the mask. And this is something maybe we can get into because it's aligned with the book. Um, that's where they're coming from. Yeah, we can get into it. It's You're like, talking about like the mind control? The doctor told us to do it. Yeah, it's an old way of thinking, but it's really ingrained in there. Like it's a real thing. Like people, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and that starts from, that starts from an early, that, that's early. I mean, these, these things are, the thing that I think people aren't realizing is that that they've been on a path. I feel like this is happening around the world. Like people have been on a certain path, including myself. Although, you know, I haven't felt, the direct effects I mean, well i felt the direct effects but i'm saying me personally i'll give you an example like my aunt called me the other day or that when, when this all started and she was off work for two months she's a dentist or a hygienist in maine and she said ah, jake i just realized i've gone 55 years without looking at my purpose mm. how did you figure out your purpose and part of me was like elated but also really sad by that yeah because i was like wow 50 and i love her so much and she's so dear to me yeah and has just been there. And I can't imagine what that feels like for people who are just now like, oh. Yeah, they're lost. And it's it's because we've been on a path and it's like that path has been dictated in, in some, some way, shape or form. Can you speak to that? I mean, that seems Absolutely. like what you were. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just speaking about inspiration. Yeah. And um, most people don't live inspired. And I, I was fortunate to kind of come across this stuff at a young age. Um, but you, you like part of what I do with the retreats is help people with that process. People just get on the treadmill and they don't get off and they're just doing what they're told. I did the same thing. I did the same exact thing. It was like, go to business school, get a business degree, get a job, do this, do that. And one of the biggest things that woke me up from is I stopped drinking. Mm. Stop drinking alcohol. You drank a lot when you were 15 to 21 in the book, right? Is yes. that is that what it, that, those were your years? Yeah. Me I, too. I stopped when I was you? 21. Oh, no yeah. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Not many people do that. It a takes lot of people a lot of courage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was socially awkward. I used to go cuz I used to be in like the TV thing. So I'd go to these Hollywood parties when I was like in my late teens, early 20s and just like downing the vodka Red Bulls just so I could get through conversations. Yeah. Just send, I know the feeling. I was in me the to same oblivion type of industry. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I know I know that whole scene. It's crazy. You stopped drinking. What did that cause for you? Um, the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can still stop drinking and be in denial. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, is usually those people go crazy. If you don't do the work to be centered with yourself, um, because a lot of people will stop drinking because drinking is a medication. It's a way to prevent yourself from feeling. And that's what I did. I numbed out and I was good at numbing out. And um, I had someone tell me that, you know, alcohol saved your ass because you probably would have died if you didn't use alcohol. So it got me through things. So it helped me out. And then I put the alcohol down and uh, I had all these emotions and I had to address them because I had been stuffing, basically drinking alcohol, just like forcing all this crap down into my body. 
And so I had to address them and um, I did it through specific means of like, you know, daily being present, being daily inventory. Was I getting angry that some of the stuff I put in my book, was I angry? Was I fearful? Like, and repetitively doing it daily. Like where could I have done better? Where was I selfish? Where was I self-seeking? Where was I dishonest? And then when you do that daily, um, it, it, it helps you be kind of impeccable with your word um, your actions. And, uh, when I don't do that stuff, I start to fall off. And so it helped me, uh, wake up and help me be more honest. It helped me, uh, uh, see and feel what truth is 